Hello and welcome to the Node-RED Contrib Flex Radio Introduction and Overview. In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to how to install and use the Node-RED Contrib Flex Radio nodes. My name is Steven, November 1 Sierra Hotel. Let's jump in and get started. So I'm going to start off with a completely blank, fresh installation of Node-RED. These nodes are going to let me control my flex radio, but in order to do that with Node-RED, I need to go to Manage Palette and Install. And if I search for Flex, you'll see the Node-RED Contrib Flex Radio nodes. This video is made with version 0.78. Your version might be slightly newer, but these nodes should work the same way. Now, I'm only installing these nodes. You may find on the internet flows that have a bunch of additional nodes like dashboard nodes and parsing nodes. I'm not going to cover those here. We're just going to look at directly controlling the radio. Some of those flows have some really great things in them. I'm going to scroll down here to where we see our new palette items, our new nodes added to the palette. We've got the request node, which lets us send commands and see the responses to those commands from the radio. We've got a message node, which lets us be able to monitor the status and message that the radio reports to us about our own and other clients. Then we've got the meter node, which lets us see the meters that the radio records, everything from the fan speed, the SWR, and the power levels. Lastly here, we've got the discovery node, which is how the radio announces itself to devices on your network. This is how Smart SDR discovers your radio. You may see a few other nodes here that are advanced, and we're not going to cover them here. Let's start out with the discovery node. The discovery node is very basic in its configuration, meaning you don't have to configure anything. It will listen on the UDP port 4992, which is where the radios will announce themselves. So we don't have to change that number, nor should you. I'm going to go up here, I'm going to drag a debug node out onto my palette, and normally I would connect these two together, other than the fact that this discovery node also puts in some important information like my serial number and my radio ID. I want to hide those for the purposes of those videos, or for the purposes of this video. So what I can do is I can come in and use node red to change these to hide me. And now also it's going to set the, the radio license ID and I'm going to set that to hide me as well. And you'll see this as we play as we run it through. So with this in place, I've got two change rules to change the output of this discovery and my message payload is enabled. Over here, I'm going to change my palette to be the debug node. I'm going to change to deploy only modified flows and then deploy. I'm going to pause this debug node because I've already gotten some discovery packets from my radio. And you can see these uh, discovery packets here that show a lot of useful information to us. The serial number, the version number of our radio, the nickname, our call sign. One that's very important that we're going to make a copy of right now is the IP address of the radio. I'm going to use this in configuring my future nodes. It also shows me how many pan adapters, how many slices I have available to myself, as well as other information. You can leave this on, and I've got a video about creating an entire dashboard just from the discovery node. But let's move on, and let's use some of the other nodes that we have. The next one I want to bring out is the message node. This node I'm going to wire directly to a debug node so that we can see the information that comes out of it. Now the remainder of the nodes need a radio configured. And you'll notice here this red triangle shows us that this node is not configured. So if I double click it, you can see that we've got add new flex radio radio. That's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And, and I'm going to use for the host that IP number that I copied before. You'll notice the port is 4,992. You're not going to want to change that. That's the default that flex radio uses. So go ahead and add that radio. And now I have some additional configuration for this message node. In particular, this topic. This lets us filter the messages coming from the radio based on different types of topics. We can look for exact string matches, MQTT style plus hash mark matches, or regular expressions to filter the topics that are coming out of this message node so that we can get just the ones we're looking for. If you leave it blank, it will emit all of the messages that come through. So I'm going to leave it blank. Now I'm also going to clear out all these debug messages from over here, and I'm going to redeploy. And you'll notice that a lot of messages have already come in. This is status information that you get when you first connect to the radio. Things here like, here's a uh, message with the topic of radio and that the front speaker is not muted on my radio. Here's some information about the radio oscillator. 
that the uh, transmission state that is locked and that it's present. You'll be able to scroll through these and you'll see more of them pop up as you work with your flows. Again, you can use that topic to filter on these different topics. These are interesting and all, but I'm sure you want to get to controlling your radio. That's what the request node does. So this request node is configured very similar to the message node in that we're going to want to configure a radio for it. Now we've already configured a radio, so we can just choose that same radio again. This request node will let us inject commands and get responses from those. So we can send a command to the radio, and then we can use a debug node to see what the output of that is. Now what kind of commands can you send to it? These commands are all of type string. So we're going to choose string from this dropdown, and we won't need the topic value. The string is interesting in that there's a list of these on the wiki.flexradio.com site. If you go in and you look at the look for the smart SDR TCP IP API, and then from there drill down into smart SDR TCP IP commands. This will give you a list of a lot of commands that you can use and the formatting for them. There is at the top of this a preamble that describes how to send these commands to the radio with a sequence number, command terminators. You're not going to need to know that information. You're only going to need to know the command itself. So if I scroll down here and I look, here's one info. The info command will give me information about the radio. And this is the format. looks very much like the discovery packet. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this command here. I'm going to go back over into my node red, into my inject node, and I'm going to post info. Now again, this information is going to show my radial serial number, so I'm going to insert another change node in here so that I can change that serial number out. And in this case, it actually reports it as message.payload.chassis serial number. And I'm going to put hide me again so that when I run this command, you won't have to be looking at my serial number. So I'm going to make these a little bit neater, and I'm going to clear my debug palette and hit deploy. Now you'll notice nothing has appeared over here. Um, I've got the message node. Let me disable that so we don't see it. My radio is connected, and when I inject the info command, you'll see that the results of that info command come out. Looks very much like that previous discovery protocol. There's a number of other commands that we can send to the radio. They're, they're listed here as well as in the Node Red Ham Radio group. There's a whole community that will help you understand what those are. The one that I want to do next, I'm going to take this node out because I'm not going to inject the info node again. But what I am going to inject are some other commands. One that I want to do because I want to understand what meters and what information I can monitor on my radio. So is this command, I'm going to get rid of the topic and I'm going to put in the meter list command. And this will give me a, meter, a list of the meters that are available on the radio. So again, clearing out my debug palette, inject the meter list command, and here I get a list of all the meters that are available on the radio. The radio numbers these meters, and these numbers you'll find will change over time. They may even change during your session as you connect and disconnect equipment and add and remove slices and clients from your radio. So we have a workaround for that. Um, and you'll see that down here as part of this. Here we're looking at meter number 18, which is the main radio fan revolutions per minute. And you'll notice this topic down here. This is how we name the fan. So if we want to get the updates about this fan speed, what we can do is we can subscribe to the fan speed updates. And we do that with the flex radio re request node. And we send a sub meter command. And the submeter command normally in the flex radio documentation will be followed by the meter number, which corresponds to the meter number we're listening to over here. Because these change, we've implemented this ability to use the named meters or that topic that you'll see over here. So if I want this main fan, I'll use this rad3 main fan, which is made up of this source, num, and name fields here. So if I go ahead and, go ahead and click done, clear out my debug palette, I hit deploy, you'll notice that nothing is getting reported here for the meter. It's because I haven't yet subscribed to it. Again, I can click this and get the meter list. I can click this and I just get this weird null message. That's because we've subscribed to the meter, but we need to configure the meter node in order to get the updates to that meter. So if I drop a meter node, uh, flex radio meter node, I configure it with this same radio. 
This has an additional configuration of the topic like we spoke about with the, re with the messages. I'm going to leave that blank so that I get all meter values. And then we also get this output, whether we want the value in context. Previously, when we looked at the meter list, there was this context for each meter that described it, giving it possible low value, high value. Value only will report just the current value of the meter. Value in context will report that value plus all this additional information. I'm going to stick to just value only because I'm just wanting to update some very simple things. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to put a debug node onto this. And I'm going to connect these two together. Now I'm going to clear this out so that when I deploy, you can see my, my main fan speeds are starting to be reported into my flow. I've already subscribed to them before. If I restart this flow, you'll notice that I'm not getting those meter updates because I've reconnected to the radio, so I would need to subscribe to it again. So uh, hopefully this introduction and overview has given you a little bit of information in terms of how to install and what these nodes are all about. We've got the discovery node, the message node, the request node, and the meter node. There'll be individual videos with each of these linked below and maybe even in those little floating boxes that YouTube does. I hope this has been useful to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.